My name's Alyssa Price. You have found Bad Mom Jokes. I'm here with my good friend, very funny comedian, Sydney Smith. Hello, nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Yeah. She is here because I've watched a lot of your, well, not a lot, but I've seen you around doing stand-up. I was stalking you on the Insta. Nice. And I was yeah. like, Echoplex. And I had a feeling it was Mystic Mondays because yes. I saw Rick and the other guys, Rick Rosario and yeah. some of it, who are the other guys? Uh, John Hallman and Jeffrey Lindemann. Yes. yes. And they host with their whole hearts all three of them oh, so are great. up there they all provide comic relief on a Monday yes. night yeah it's it's uh, lots of fun I yeah. love that mic and there's yeah. a show and I think and I, I could I would that's one of the mics I would invite anyone to it's so hip it's it yeah. was that place called like DTLA yeah resident downtown LA resident yes. downtown LA yes very yes, yes. cool they have like those uh, food trucks that are great yes and they have a whole outdoor patio so you can like hang out mm -hmm. watch some comics go have a beer come back come back in, in, in yeah. and out it's a great space yeah. and great people roll through there Absolutely. Yeah. There's been some wild comedians yeah. that have graced that stage. So. Right. Yeah. Camilla Cleese was uh, one of them. And nice. uh, I saw Brandon Wardell there. And yeah, yeah. there's just been they a whole bunch through. of... Yeah, yeah. Definitely. If you're in LA, like you got to check that one out. Yeah. And I was going to say, Echoplex. Yeah. How did that come about? You know what? It was... Uh, John Hallman is the crafty kind of creator behind all of this. And he had somehow set it up for a very special edition of, of the Mystic Monday. And it was, you know, the open mic that, that happens before the main show. There was about, I would say, 20 people on staff and about 10 comics. So that's how we started the wow. night. So that was lots of fun. Um, lots of people did jokes about security guards bartenders, sound men, what have you. That was our audience at first, but then it grew and grew and grew and grew and it became a huge night that was worthy of the Echo Echoplex. But wow. uh, I thought it was pretty nice of those guys to still have an open mic for us kind of open micers at the big venue before their main show started. So yeah, it was lots and lots of fun. It is and, yeah. and good for them because to have that experience on a stage like that, I think what happens for comedians is we have tons of experience doing open mics in a tiny bar right and then how do you prepare for a big stage and arena and that's kind of a make or break and you don't want to be in a situation that you're not prepared for that you know exactly and to have the stakes like for that open mic to be able to have that huge stage but then have it be an intimate crowd was just amazing because it's like cool. yeah you're getting there but you're not you know yeah. playing to to like two thousand people exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah do they have plans to do it again I think they probably do. They're back to the resident yeah. um, for their residency. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Gotta terrible. love those times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then yeah. I think eventually the Echoplex again. So uh, that would be really cool to... I know I'll be hopping on that train if they... Uh, they do it again. Yeah, but, yeah. I will too. Yeah, Text me if for some reason because I, yeah. I go in and out. It's like if I have a show, then I go out. And if I don't have a show, I'm like, eh, I'm good. I'm going to get high and have some mommy time. Like, yeah, that's more my absolutely. Do you smoke? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. So do people yeah. smoke the weed in, cannab in, ca in cannabis? In cannabis? In cannabis? In Canada? Oh, my God. <laughs> There's a play on word. There you go. That's I'm in, in cannabidis. You know, Cannabud? Cannabide. Oh, I like cannabide. Cannabud? That's fun. Actually, we, we legalized weed uh, federally. Oh, yeah, which was exciting. Wait, federally? But, yeah, like the whole no, country. Oh, Canada did. Canada did. Oh, yeah, cause yeah. You, oh, cause you're in a different country. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I had a little too much to drink last night. I'm thinking Alaska. Oh, like where is my like? I'm such an American yeah. that I'm like, there's no other country and on this continent. Well, Canadians okay. mostly think they're Americans for what it's worth. But well, we I, get, there's such a strong connection, right? We, yeah, we get. I find that Canadians. I often have to defend the states, in particular California, because people in Canada just get a very bad impression of, of, of and, Americans. Yeah, and they, they yeah. because they're literally geographically just like a little bit above America, they kind of turn their noses down and you have to be like... It's easy to do, quite it frankly. Is, it is, but it's also kind of like, like when I said I was moving down here, a lot of people were like, oh, so you're going to support Trump. And it was like, what? Ooh, <laughs> like, yeah. no, yeah. like what? I, California sees yeah. him like every day. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there are some real snakes in the grass here. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is... This is where you're so glad you're from Canada. It is. Because it's hard sometimes. I have pride in being American, and then some days I really don't. Yeah. You know? And we're so violent, and we're so... 
It's it's Canada is strangely similar, actually. It's just we don't, it? we don't have the population to support a mm. lot of it because there's only 30 million people there. But there are yeah. a lot of conservatives. Like there was an election a couple of days ago, and we almost lost our liberal prime minister. Um, and it, there are a lot of like gun wielding maniacs there, but because they're not in a larger population, they don't get as much of a voice. But well, you don't have a leader that's publicly defending. Yes, them. so that really that's hurts the big us thing. right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sure. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. But there's still a lot of amazing Americans out there. Absolutely, you know? it's absolutely. Just, yeah, sometimes I, just, I have to defend yeah. that. <laughs> it's true because yeah. what you see in the media is like just such a little slice of entertainment and oh. it's there for entertainment and so they find the most entertaining um thing and they don't really it doesn't really paint a clear picture yes you know, yeah 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 the population yeah. it's so true yeah yeah and even just in la like from where i'm from like when i move here people would be like oh like hollywood and it's like that is such a small snippet mm. of even just the entertainment industry let alone the city yes. as a whole yeah. so yeah well i think the image projected to entertain people again is mm -hmm. very different from the reality if you're on the ground totally like yeah, most yeah. of us don't even watch television no you know? like, and your friends and neighbors yeah. are like grips and like boom mic operators They're right not like Brad Pitt or whatever. Well, yes. I mean, for some, I guess he, yeah. he has neighbors too. But, yeah. You know. There's only so many multi-million dollar neighborhoods. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's not where you move when you first move here. <laughs> it's like a small apartment in North Hollywood or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You often bring up your bad mom. Yes, this is true. Yeah. Um, my mom is a lovely person. She's a wonderful lady, but is her she parenting is sometimes questionable. No, you know what? I just, I commend her even when she's not watching Aww. me. So she's, she's hilarious and she's lots of fun, but oh my goodness. Yeah. Questionable parenting moves. I want to hear everything about her because when you get up there, I just, she does sound like such an amazing character. So I'm an only child and I'm also an only grandchild. So I'm literally the only person on either side of my family. So I had a lot of adults in my life and I feel like my mom was kind of my only ally a lot of times because she's more or less um, a teenager, a perpetual teenager. Oh my God. I feel like moms like that when I hear about her in your set, she's kind of this, the original bad moms. You know, and so, so how, what, what's her era? Like, was she like badass chick in the eighties? Like oh, what's her backstory? Totally eighties. Oh man. I love that you asked that. Yeah. She's so, she was very, very eighties. She was very like pictures of her in the eighties. She's very like current, like she had like short spiky hair and like the, the angular shoulder pads and all that kind yes. of stuff. And she met my dad in the late seventies. Um, she became pregnant with me. She was a Catholic woman, um, and as such, she uh, got married to my uh, dad, who had not yet come out of the closet. Oh my um, God, this is getting better. Yeah, um, so I, I was born, and then they divorced. Uh, my dad did go ahead and come out of the closet. So growing up, it was like, you know, it, it was kind of me and my mom against the world. So there was a, and she was like 80s rocker chick, and she like, would always make me feel really guilty for doing anything that was like slightly pop culture-y. Like, I oh, was, that's hilarious. I was really into Madonna and she would be like, oh, put on some scorpions. Like, you know, she was always trying to like instill her <laughs> rocker chick into me. She loved to party. Like that's, all, that's her big thing. So she kind of like raised me to like be a, you know, do party favors for her drunk friends and stuff, which was always really fun So as well. you were entertaining it, her drunk friends from yes. a very early age. From a very early age, Is that where the yeah. performer in you kind of like totally. sprouted out? Absolutely, absolutely. Because when you're entertaining a bunch of drunk adults in the middle of Canada, like the bar's really high. Like you have to be funny. You oh. think so? I think so. I feel like you were probably so fucking adorable. You oh. could just open your mouth. <laughs> And then they'd be like, oh, this is crazy. Kids are the, seriously, they're the best. They, they're, they just open their mouths and they're way funnier than anything you could plan. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. It's just such a natural innocence for the things that they say that, like, I remember one time when I was like seven, I thought it would be really fun. My mom had trained me to get her beer from the fridge and I thought it would, I as see you, you at do, the cocktail, as you do. like cocktail, yeah. um, trade mixing the drinks or something yeah 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 totally <laughs> like bartending like cocktail style totally um 
And I remember I thought it would be a really funny prank to fill an empty beer bottle with water and give it to her. Oh, oh shit. Oh, it was not, it did not go over. But. I imagine she needed that beer. <laughs> yeah, she needed She was counting and, on that. And I didn't understand, like as an adult, like if I had a kid and it, and it whatever gender it chose yeah. to be, brought me a, glass, a bottle of water instead of a beer, I would be like, like, what is this? And that's exactly what she yeah. did. She took a sip and was like, oh, no, you don't. And like, like gave me. Came down. Oh, yeah. She yeah. came down hard. So and, and poor you. And that's what I think because my son has an amazing sense of humor. Mm, yeah. And it trips him yeah. up a lot because yeah. in his head, he's like, this is going to be hilarious. My mom or dad or teacher is going to laugh so hard. And then when they come down on him, I think the child is like confused. Yeah. Why am I, that was hilarious. Why am I getting yelled at right now? You know, it's really, that's tricky. Yeah. It is tricky and it's tricky to learn when you're in that development age to learn what's going to be funny, what's going to like mm -hmm. land and then what's like inappropriate because you're right. still experimenting with like, yeah. so maybe you say something mean or you say something in yeah. class when it like wasn't time to speak right. or whatever and you're just like being creative and like throwing something out there and then yeah. you end up in the hallway or Right. You're like, my parents thing. thought it was hilarious when I said butthole last night. Like I can't. <laughs> Say that to my teacher, or like, like now it's not okay to expose myself. I keep telling him, I'm like, you know what? Just save it for, um, save it for a comedy venue. You yeah. know, like this is at the comedy club. Yeah. yeah, this is not like there is a time and a place. And when he finally is able to do it there, he's gonna be like, oh. Finally, I can just be myself. But if he, if he can nail timing, he's got it made. That's yeah. not the comedy. So. He really yeah. has that naturally. I'm so jealous of him. I have to work fucking hard at yeah. timing. Like, I'm that person that's like, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, say the line. Oh, I got it right. Like, I got to start doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I don't literally yeah. say one, one thousand, no, but my but, husband's a musician yeah. and I'm yeah. not. Right. And so he will listen to my set and say, if you pause before this punchline, you'll get a laugh. And he's always right. Yep. And I have no idea why I paused because I have no musicality, but I'm like, don't forget to fucking pause because he said to. You That's know? great advice. Yeah. That's my biggest problem on stage is I find I go out and just like, bleh, right. <laughs> what I have to say. And I kind of need to make sure to like breathe and mm, take your give time. It a yeah. Yeah, yeah, pace yeah. yourself mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, it's tricky, right? Because you could do that, but then you when it starts to get too loose, it's like, uh, you know, like then it dies and you have to recover. Like I've seen comedians do that where they take so much time. It's like there was right. not enough laughter for that pause. Like you need to ride that next wave, you know. So it's it's a tricky thing. People it don't is. realize. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if there's too much time, it's it's amazing how you can just kind of lose. Like, you can mm. see it in someone's face. Mm. Like, when you're just like, and they're gone. Yes. Yeah, it's oh, weird. Yeah. And yeah. to get it back, and then you have to work a little harder, and then everyone sees you working a little hard. Yeah. It's yeah. wild, isn't it? Is. it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, since May. Yeah, I just oh. started. Oh, Yeah. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so. and so before that, you worked in communications? Or? Yeah, yeah, okay. and um, I did lots of... Um, I advertising and stuff like that and that's how I ended up um, oh, cool. so I'm, I'm going to UCLA to do TV writing and that's oh, what cool. I always wanted to do was be yeah. a TV writer so when I was like 18 I went to um, college to do uh, creative writing which I really enjoyed but ended up in communications and advertising just because that was kind of the natural progression if you weren't gonna live in an entertainment focused city mm. which I, I didn't at the time sure um, so yeah I went into communications but I always held on to wanting to do TV writing and I came down here to take school and it just so happened that I've always been interested in stand-up and then through meeting those Mystic Monday guys, they suggested coming to do that mic and that was my first time doing it. So. Stop it! Your yeah. first open mic was at Mystic Monday? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was awesome. It was so much, those guys are so... Sydney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This makes me so happy. Right oh. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, you Alyssa. I love Rick yes. so much, and we've known each other for years, oh, wow. and that makes me so happy right now. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Thank you. I had no idea. I just figured yeah. you'd just been doing this since birth. Like, oh. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm, and I don't know. I get really sentimental about what, where people do their first time, or what, it, what happened, or I don't, because it's like such an important thing. Yeah. Where was your first time? Westside Comedy, and okay. it was really special. Oh, yeah. But because when I met you, you were just yeah. getting back into it, right? Yeah, so, that was okay. in 2014. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. And yeah, see, yeah. I had known Rick was one of the. Anyways, I'm gonna bring Rick on because he. Yeah. 
I really just, I want to bring him on and tell him, like, if he's, like, warm fuzzies personified. Seriously. He's a human cool. hug. Like, he's, he like, a walking hug. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, he's Anyways, so cool. I, yeah. I'm totally ADD. I want yeah. to go back to your mom. Yes. Because I can't stop fixating on it. Please. So it was just the two of you. More or less, yeah. And then your grandparents were nearby? So my grandma was nearby. Um, And then, so my dad and my grandma ran restaurants. And my oh, mom. yeah, okay. My mom didn't, and, um, well, she, she kind of floated around and worked at some of them, but yeah. everyone really knows she wasn't really working. Right, um, well, she was, like, the person that they coming. had to give a job to because right. she was your mom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would do things that I don't think a lot of moms did. Like, she would be like, hey, do the dishes before you leave the house because when you live with roommates when you're older, that's not going to fly. And it would be like, oh, that's a good reason. Mm. Whereas, like, most moms would be like, do the dishes. It's important right. that it's clean. And yeah. it's like, well, that's not really... It is, but she you know. give you reasons. Like, yeah, like, you need yeah, to yeah, know yeah. this skill because because yeah, yeah exactly. Smart. So that yeah. was smart, but then also she would like we were going to um, San Luis Obispo to meet uh, some friends from San Francisco the other weekend, and I was just telling her this on the phone, and she was like, oh, "I love SLO, man. That's a big party town." And I was like, "I don't even want to know why you think that." <laughs> And then, like, a couple <laughs> sentences later, she was like, do kids still do mescaline? <laughs> I'm in my 30s. I don't know. I mean, maybe they did do. Did she manage to <laughs> age gracefully with all this party? She did. She looks really good. That's what yeah. I want to know. I'm yeah. like, can I continue to be a bad mom by night and age gracefully and not be you that person that's like, can. why are you here? You know what I mean? Like, why? Yes, like, yeah. you really don't, you're too old to be here. You she's, know? She still passes. When people tell her she has an old daughter, or when she tells people she has a daughter in her 30s, people or think she's like teen pregnancy type, mm. which she surprisingly wasn't. Yeah. But uh, she, yeah. <laughs> um, and she had me, she's like 24 or something right. like that. Which so, was normal. Which was time. normal back yeah. That was the age that like was. Right after college. That's yeah, what you yeah, do. Totally. Yeah, totally. That's the new like 35 or mm -hmm. whenever mm -hmm. people have kids now. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a. Uh, Interesting. But yeah, she um, she was raised by her dad and her brothers. Um, her mom died when she was really young, so oh. she's a total tomboy. So that had a That's lot to do with it. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was raised in that tomboy. Family. Like, a lot of my friends are, are dudes and stuff, and, and I didn't really pick up on the fact that my mom kind of raised me to, like, drink beer and watch hockey. So it wasn't Got necessarily it. that I, like, wanted to necessarily, like, I, I love all my female friends, but it was a lot of interests weren't so the different. same. Yeah, yeah. This is really interesting because my whole thing is advising mom to do it more like the dad. Right, exactly. Like I was out yeah. at a restaurant last yeah, yeah, night yeah. and a dad's hauling two little girls and geese to go like have dinner. Like he's not cooking for them and they're just right? going to pass out when they get home at nine o'clock or whatever. And it's a school night. Like moms wouldn't dream of doing that. No. Like, and they have a system, which is great because maybe that creates stability. Like, I'm back and forth about yeah, it, yeah. but they're going crazy. They're going crazy. Because they're doing too much, yes. and dads just do it different, and the kids are fine. I know. That's my favorite thing about your set, and I find it so relatable about there's so many things that you've outlined that you do, and then you're like, but if a dad did that, it would be like, congratulations. Exactly. And if a mom did that, it's like, oh, like, you're lazy. And, Bad mom. Oh, yeah. it's wild. Yeah. That's why I love what you're doing. I love that you're Aww. making it. I do. I love that you're making it okay for your mom, for, like, you know, kids to have moms that, like, are productive members of an artistic community without like compromising what they do like you know the idea that like hey we're gonna have cereal for supper tonight because I have an open mic like yeah like your kids didn't yeah. die they didn't starve yeah. like yeah. yeah you know for sure yeah. and it's so funny because so the backdrop for this new set that I'm trying out is just a really messy kitchen yeah. one of my friends from Columbia came in and was like well that doesn't mean you're a bad mom no. And that she's absolutely right. Like, we're not bad moms that I'm challenging America's puritanical version yes. of what, what's a bad mom. I love that. Because we watch TV shows, like, you know, where it's the perfect kitchen. Like, mm -hmm. impossibly perfect. And then all the moms are, like, feeling bad that they don't have impossibly perfect kitchen. kitchen. So I'm like... Give yourself permission to not worry about that shit. Exactly. You know? if, if you care, then great. But if you don't, don't judge yourself. You exactly. Know? Growing up in the 80s, like, I don't know, we didn't have 
like seat belts and everyone was smoking and like we all survived <laughs> like and well, I'm not saying it's those right of us that but, to tell, well right? yeah that's right yeah yeah but you're right so I didn't wear a seatbelt when yeah. it was made illegal to not have a seatbelt she if a cop drove by she'd just be like hit the deck and we'd all like <laughs> <laughs> fire in the hole <laughs> Yeah, I really think that I'm mo I'm momming. I'm doing the mom from the 80s, like your yeah, mom. Yeah. And the other moms are doing something that's of this time that is like insane. I think that there's a lot of, um, it's not as bad as it used to be. Maybe I could be wrong about this, but it seemed like there is a lot of push in like the early 2000s for moms to be like, I can have it all. Like I'm going to prove to you yes. that I can be the best mom and the yes. best career focused person and, and the best like, blah. Like, and then your brain goes, bing. Because it's not humanly possible. It's just not. I'll tell you right now. Please, when I'm doing stand-up, my house is thrashed. And when I'm not doing stand-up, I'll only have time for cleaning. Like, yeah. It's like it's an either or. Like there's not there's not enough of me. I don't have a staff. Like right. <laughs> and and nor should you need yeah. to. Like, right. Yeah. Well. <laughs> well, I mean, you, I would love. You would to love not to. Cook, yeah. To not to not clean. I mean, I'm just putting that out there. Like somehow Joan Rivers did it all those years. Like. Hey, she's touche. so funny like don't even pick up a broom or whatever I'm like I wish favorites. I know oh I the love queen. her I love her so much yeah I uh I really go like going on YouTube and watching old videos yes. of her on Johnny Carson oh yes oh yeah amazing have you found the Joan in bed or whatever no so there's this guy on YouTube Ricky Glover and they did this whole series I think it was like right before she died and she has like I don't know 50 or 60 interviews that she did in oh, her wow. bed. Oh, yeah, I you'll love have to it. check it out. I will. It's really cool. And then I had this whole thing where I was watching it and I thought maybe she was like in my house. Like I had like conjured her spirit by watching like so much of the show that no one else watches. That she's like, <laughs> someone's paying attention to what I have to say. I and then that. she had, she was very disapproving of me. <laughs> like that I wasn't funny, that I clean too much and mess with the, uh, do the kids too much. And like, I this love that. I love the spirit of Joan Rivers. I get that with anything I'm watching Do at the you? time. Yeah, and it's really bad if I watch British shows because I start thinking and like talking with a British yes. accent. I have to stop doing this. Yeah. Do you do a British accent? No. Okay, no. I can't either, uh, really. Uh, and every time I try, people are like, are you trying to be Australian? Like, they just oh, don't funny, know. funny, funny. I love their cadence though and yes. I love their sense of humor and yes. I do start thinking that way too when I'm when I'm watching it. Yeah. I love that dry acerbic wit mm -hmm. like it's just oof it's so cutting and cold. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. great. Yeah. Have you ever read the like Douglas Adams his whole like, oh, yeah, like Hitchhikers? Hitchhikers yeah, yeah, that's my yeah. I have like a, a compilation of his books and it's just like my bible. And that's very much that way. Like when you read that, you'll start getting that in your head, that yeah, cadence yeah, yeah, yeah. and that sense of humor and those details. And oh, I love totally. it so much. But that's... it doesn't translate because I have a California girl accent. So it's like, <gasps> yeah, like what are you doing? That's not like I'll start calling poops poos. And, yeah. You know, I mean, like I totally pick it up. <laughs> Poo in the loo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't call trash cans. I call them bins. Bins. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, the Lori. Yes. I love Douglas Adams. See, we have all this stuff in common. We it do. It doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. No. And you're from California, which I feel like I was meant to be from California, even though I'm from Canada. Yeah, you so. mentioned that to me. Yeah, what does yeah, that yeah. mean? I don't know. I just feel like the people down here are like, they're chill. And like in Canada, you're literally facing six months of winter your whole life. And it took me a really long time to understand that that was giving me like, you know, anxiety and depression that's beyond your control, right? Like if you can find things that are within your control and deal with them, but I couldn't control it. And then I realized that one of the reasons why people have such amazing outlooks down here is because of all the sunshine. Mm. And like people are just chiller because they're not like literally fighting. So they go from like in Canada, you go from fighting, you like get this survival kick in for mm. six months of the year because mm. you're fighting winter. So you're like really mean to people and you're like, you know, like I got to get stuff for myself because I'm surviving. And then it's summer and then you're like so nice to everyone. And here it's just like people are just always in summer mode. That makes a lot of sense. It's We're just great. getting a lot of vitamin D. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting because my critique of California, see, I'm from here, so right. I take it for granted. Right, 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 right. right. Um, but you should be able to critique the place you're from also. That's true. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Like have a, you should, I think, question what seems normal or whatever. But, yeah. Um, but my whole thing is, is that because we don't have seasons, we're, we don't really get a break. 
You yeah. know, we're just go, 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 go. Especially for that's me, that's true. like, I, I, I'm just, the sun's out, let's shoot, let's do it, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And where I think winter makes you break, That's you know? very true. That's yeah. super so that's, true. And, and because it's seasonless, we don't really have a concept of the passage of time. Okay, this like is very 10 true. Ten years yes. later, it's like, oh, here's a drought. This is our season. It's yeah. like in ten year cycles. Here's a flood. <laughs> like that is been a very decade. true. I, I seriously have thought it's been July since I've been here. Yeah, like, because it's yeah, like, yeah, which is, and it yeah, messes so with tr- your head. It's an amazing place, though, and you just have to be okay with like. I think the you have to be okay with the fact that there's going to be people like you're always in someone's way. <laughs> Here? Yeah, like if you're on the freeway or whatever, like oh, you just yeah, have to like. Road rage. There's just a lot of yeah. There's yeah. just a lot of people on the road. So and not where you're that. from. No, there's are you from? Here. So you said you're from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and Canada. How, what's yeah. the population? Just to give us an idea. It's like a quarter million people. Okay, so, so decent. It's it's yeah. decent. Yeah, it's a college town. There's a big it. university there. Um, it would be compare. I like to compare it to like Madison, Wisconsin. Okay, but just like super remote. Like if Madison was on its own, you know, 600 mile box. Oh, so you're isolated. Super isolated, yeah. Oh, interesting. But you have a hospital, a mall. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's like like three hospitals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. You have everything you need, but you're kind of landlocked. Exactly. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but interesting. Yeah. So it's really nice to be in Santa Monica and have the ocean and we have uh, we have it is beautiful. nice you guys I can't lie like I'm in a tiny condo with two kids and I'm like I don't think I'm gonna I think you're just guys you're just gonna have to share your whole life it's a boy yes. and a girl and because it's really nice here I yeah. don't really like the trade offs it's worth it leave. yeah <laughs> totally yeah. worth it yeah so do you yeah. go to the beach very often being close to it or no um I try to yeah yeah, yeah. um I like to uh, I got into body surfing a bit this summer did you. I could never Which, do it. I could never get my body like I, stiff enough. I, I was eating a lot of sand. I wrecked a bathing suit. And oh, hilarious. It was, I thought now, I was being so did badass. Did you have but, an instructor? No, no, I just went for it. And my husband doesn't swim and can't swim. So he was oh, being no. like really gentle and like, he'd be like, okay, well, I guess I'll come to the beach with you. I think it was, he felt like he was supervising a child because he'd get to the beach and be like, oh, I just want to relax after work. And I'd be out there being like, hey, like, I'm going to catch a wave. And he'd be like, this oh, is too funny. I'm watching. Hi. Oh my <laughs> gosh. That's so, adorable. Yeah, fun dates. Yeah. <laughs> How did you meet him? Um, we worked together um, when I was... Um, my like first job outside of my family restaurants, I was um, 18 and I was working at, it's called A&B Sound. It was a record store back in Saskatoon. Oh, cool. And uh, they sold like home theater and electronics and stuff. And I was a cashier and he worked home theater. So we met that way. You met and, when you were 18? Yeah. Oh and my then, God. He's like, I'm going to snag this one and I'm never going to let go. I got me a good one. We've, <laughs> that's sweet. Thank you. It's yeah. True. We've been together pretty much ever since. Yeah. I, um, I went out to Montreal to go to college, and then he actually ended up coming out there a year later. And then, like a psychopath. Yeah, I'm just yeah exactly. <laughs> just kidding. Me that was my Send big nightmare. Yeah. My like <laughs> high school boyfriend following me to college. I'm like, no, we're done. But obviously, no. he's a good guy. Yeah, so you're yeah. Like, he's all right, amazing. Yeah, cool. yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's wonderful. Yeah, no, yeah. I, all my my uh, over my my early twenties, my path kept like leading back to him. So. Finally Aww. decided it was meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we didn't get married for years because my family is Ukrainian and Catholic and intense, and his family is Mennonite, which is like, like one step away from Amish. Like very I've heard of it. Serious religious folk who live out in the country. So was he raised so, Mennonite in the country? He, he's like one generation removed so his parents were but then they kind of broke free so his grandparents and aunts and uncles are all still very much in that that world so you guys come from two different worlds two totally different worlds yeah my it's funny you say that because my joke was always we're 20 minutes away but worlds apart because he Mm. was his farm was just outside the city but it was like a different world like no liquor store in his hometown (laughs) like everyone raised chickens like totally different yes and then coming from your like bad mom like rocker single like party animal mom I love oh, that. It was very There's different. your show. Oh, I would love that. That you yeah. could write. The yeah. only thing that we all share in common out of all these people that I've just described is weed. Everyone loves <gasps> weed. Like, Interesting. 
interesting. Even my husband's farm parents love weed. So that's like What's the not one to thing, love, right? I mean, really? Yeah. Uh, that's so that's, interesting, that's though. That's the one thing that bonds us all together, yeah. But my mom, Canada. Can't, smoke, my mom can't smoke weed anymore, so now she gets me to make her edibles. Or she was getting, now you can buy them. What but happened? For a Why while, can't she, she do it anymore? Um, Does she get vertigo? No. I think oh, I'm getting awesome. vertigo. <laughs> I ended up in the hospital one day. I'm like, I didn't have the courage to tell them, like, is this edible? (laughs) My dehydrated. (laughs) Did you accidentally take an edible, or you you were well aware that you? No, and I take like half of one. I'm such a lightweight. I'm I don't do it that often, so like I smoke, you know, a quarter of a bowl every three days. Like I'm like such a lightweight, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my mom doesn't smoke it like I said anymore, and then she. I got me to make her edibles and then so I did this was before you could just buy them in the yeah. store and she called me one day and she's like wait wait so I just like take one before work and I was like no <laughs> no you don't do that you monster like you take it at night when you're like going to bed like yeah, watching a movie weekend. or on the week yeah like totally. oh my goodness I was like I don't know what you guys did in the 70s but and then like she's my, like I want to enjoy my day yeah yeah <laughs> you do, why would I, you, do I, you I mean <laughs> Why would I take it and then sleep it off? Yeah. <laughs> I love her. I just want to have a fun day at work. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's so great that Canada legalized it federally because the hiccup for us Americans is you could be in Colorado. Now you could be in California or Vegas and you could be fully out about your cannabis consumption or whatever we have to call it now. But federally, it's not legal. Right. So then you get into a bundle of trouble on that level. And so for someone that's on like an important board or works in politics, like it's two, and then you have two different worlds kind of, totally, you know, in contrast to each other. Like there couldn't, there's no situation where a very conservative Mennonite family, well, maybe there is, I don't know. uh, And then a very hip, like, you know, wild rock and roll family all smoke weed together. Like, I feel like my religious, I come from a very religious background and I feel like I can't tell them because it's right. like, like their assholes just go, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. no. <laughs> She's going to hell, yeah. you know? No, it's just because you're an American you think that. Like, Well, yeah, yeah. There's still a lot of Canadians who, who aren't into it. And it's, like my aunt, for example, like the whole family smokes weed except my aunt and she like doesn't get it. Like she'll like complain about how like she'll be like, oh, you guys are all smoking weed in your cars and then you're all going to get in trouble because they're starting to pull people over now. And I had to be like, OK, so everyone's always smoked weed in their car. I don't I don't <laughs> even do that. So yeah. I'm not getting pulled over. And secondly, like they would people would get pulled over and like they're not starting to look at that now like yeah. people have been smoking the weed yes. before it was legal that's the whole reason why they legalized yes. it yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah, like it's same thing like a, her bubble yeah. just went yeah 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 yeah, yeah. you like, know yeah. i think some people have very adverse effects yeah and then but then they make everyone else the problem that's yeah. what i can't stand it's like you can't just own up that you can't handle it yeah. Because your brain is different or whatever. Which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah. I had girlfriends like that where and then they would be super judgy on me. I'm like, if you could if you could enjoy this high, you would. Exactly. Instead you're get paranoid or you can't function and it confronts you mentally and so you can't do it. So lay off. Like, yeah. you know, like exactly. that's your thing you need to work out. And no one's gonna make you do it. I've never seen anyone like pushing weed on someone. No, exactly. Yeah. And that's why I don't understand why people compare it to alcohol because it's really not. Like no. and alcohol we have no problem with. And we have no problem with like, go ahead, have a drink, go ahead. Yes. Like that we but we would yes. never be like, have a fucking toke. Like Yeah, I know, <laughs> you know? Right? Like I just I don't understand or like yeah. my, my old adage was always like if you're like walking down the alley at night alone and you're a girl by herself would you rather see dudes who just pounded a 40 of whiskey or mm. dudes who just smoked a joint? Like, what's going to make you feel better? Absolutely. So there's yeah. always that. So yeah. that's why I don't like it when people Everyone compare it to is alcohol. More, it's definitely safer if people are high. Yeah, exactly. No doubt. It's there's just like, safer. Hey, bro, yeah. I can't even motivate to move right yeah. now. Like, <laughs> Do you have any chips? Yeah. As opposed to like, <laughs> on a fucking yeah. fight or Dude. whatever people, yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, all the people that beat their wives when they come home from a night at the the weed store. Right. 
supposed to the night at For the sure. bar. Instead of like yeah. come home and like caress their wife. Yeah. It's totally just like, my husband told me too, he's like, I can always tell you're high because you're so nice to me. Aww. I'm like, oh my God, am I not nice to you normally? You refuse isn't this short. Right? <laughs> you're not like a royal bitch. <laughs> Okay, so I'm so distracted because this whole time there's been like one spot that the green screen, so I keep like putting my arm there, but now I feel like it's going to be funny if anyone can tell. Mm. So I'm going to leave it. It's going to be the brown fleck in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything coming up that you want to tell me about or um, something about you that I don't know? Because I've only been doing it since May, I'm still trying to understand what sticks for me so mm. I'm I'm kind of just like bleh everything out and then mm. like I'm not I don't have tight jokes yet like I'll you're tell, wondering you know, what to keep yeah yes. exactly what yeah. sticks against yeah. the wall type thing so yeah I think that'll be interesting to to continue that and I took improv 101 at the UCB just finished that yeah so that was really cool too I think Fine. it helped me learn some uh you know shorten things up and, and mm. that kind of thing so yeah um i'm gonna do mystic mondays this monday again nice. so that's the later. that's the only show i have yeah. coming up but oh cool uh, i'll yeah. try to be there I, for the open oh, mic i would love it yeah, if you did. yeah that would be awesome hi hi okay we're Hello. done She's back. <laughs> i do want to um really quick uh so we're doing a green screen this week and when i texted you like that we're gonna switch it up and do something different it's okay she it's no it's okay judy um, do you have to get going? Hi. Are you back? Okay, thank you. Do you need anything, Judy, or have it? Okay, thanks, Judy. Um, so when I texted Sydney this week, like, hey, we're doing a green screen, you responded with, you shot me a video. <laughs> of the, Hi, I'm in Delaware, scene yeah, from Wayne's World. From Wayne's World. I'm like, I love that movie. That is one the of my all-time favorite movies. And we Me were too. exchanging texts about it. Yeah, best movie ever. I think I watched it maybe um, like twice a month after school. You know, oh, a, I love it. I had a VCR in my room and a little TV, and I had four videos. I had Home Alone 2, Wayne's World, The Addams Family movie, great. <laughs> and Ace Ventura. And those oh, were, I would great. say, oh, and Mrs. Yeah. Doubtfire. Nice. That, that was my great little, one. I had that my library. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good library. Yeah, yeah, Wayne's World, man. I definitely saw it more than once in the movie theater. I was a yeah. fan. Oh. I loved Garth. Yes. So I think we're going to do like a Bad Moms reenactment. Yes. I think we have to. We're going to say goodbye. We're going to uh, remind you to subscribe and tap the bell if you've made it this far into the video. We really appreciate it. And, She's the best. Oh, Sydney, yeah. thank you so thank much for you. being here. This is a lot of fun. Amazing. Thank yeah. you for having me. Of course. All right, bye. Oh. I'm in London. I got me some mace. Let's go get a pint. Hey, I'm in Bora Bora. Or you could go to a yoga retreat. Technology free, man. Or you can get magically whisked away to a PTA meeting. Hi, I'm at a PTA meeting. <laughs>